Welcome to my new series, where we explore the similarities and differences of roles in both League of Legends and Dota 2, through the lens of mechanically similar characters. In this episode, we will discuss the Enchanter support by comparing the skills and gameplay of the champion Lulu and the hero Oracle. I chose these two supports because they both rely heavily on point and click spells with multiple effects, which can be cast on both allies and enemies. Let's start with the art design. In my previous video, I compared Ash and Drow Ranger, two heroes both visually, thematically, and gameplay wise almost the same. This time, we have a gnome wizard and a. Um, I don't really know what this thing is. Actually, in Dota, it's not often that you can tell what the hell you're looking at, as most heroes are a one-off of their species in-game. There are monsters, ghost things, zombies, snakes, flying snakes, a ball, and even a French pangolin. League, on the other hand, has a great majority of its champions coming from a limited set of existing species, be it human, Vastaya, or Yordles. Whether you like consistency or chaos is entirely up to you. Let's take a look at the mechanics. The Enchanter's support, also known as the defensive or saving support, is defined by having powerful spells that primarily boost allies over just hurting enemies. Both Lulu and Oracle have multiple spells that, when used on allies, gives them some sort of defensive combat advantage. Since all of their spells are very different from each other, this gives me a lot of opportunity to talk about the support differences in great length. We'll start the comparison by first looking at each hero's shield spell. And oh boy, is there a lot to talk about. Both Lulu and Oracle can apply their shield spell to an enemy or ally. When Lulu sends her picks to an enemy, it does damage, and when sent to an ally, it provides a bonus health shield. It's this shield part that I want to bring attention to. League of Legends has an absurd number of shield sources, some from items, but countless more from abilities. When a unit gains a shield, you can see UI for it to appear as extra white health. There's so much shielding that some abilities and items specifically target shields. In contrast, Dota only has three abilities and two finished items in the entire game that provide a health shield. It's so rare, there's no UI for it, and there's no way to tell how much shield health is left. Instead, defensive buffs in Dota often give direct physical or magical resistances to the target. In this case, Oracle gives the target a barrier that blocks all incoming magic damage, while also disarming them. And in that, I've introduced another major difference. In Dota, there are countless abilities that can screw over your allies. You can disarm them, you can stun them, stasis them against their will, push them around, do damage to your allies. You can even sacrifice them to the enemy fountain from global range. There's even an item that polymorphs yourself. League has a much stronger leash on what you can or can't do to your allies. Though yes, Bard, we see you in the corner there. Moving on, I want to compare the root ability from Oracle and the speed ability from Lulu. In the previous episode, I talked about how League is balanced around mobility, while Dota is more focused on committal and crowd control. Lulu can buff an ally's attack and movement speed, while Oracle can channel an AoE root that lasts for as long as he channels the spell. Just like before, one benefits a dancing ally, and the other produces a stationary enemy. When Lulu uses the same spell on an enemy, it does turn into a polymorph, but nothing changes when Oracle uses it. In fact, all three of Oracle's base abilities have identical properties when used on allies and enemies. Oracle's root spell has a secondary effect though, an AoE purge, or what League players might call a cleanse. In Dota, purge removes negative debuffs from allies and positive buffs from enemies. This is another thing you'll not find much of in League. It's almost impossible to remove buffs from an enemy champion, since so many kits are designed around these buffs. League makes it a high priority to not make anyone feel crappy because they had stuff taken away from them. There is no gold lost on death, death timers are shorter, buffs can't be removed, and passives can't be disabled. 
Dota's doesn't balance, just shrugs and says, eh, why not? Rapid fire mode for the last two. Lulu has a linear skill shot nuke. Dota has very few of those. Most skill shots are circles on the ground, or the spell is just point and click. For example, Oracle can point and click nuke his ally and they can't dodge it. The spell heals afterwards, so I guess it's okay. Finally, the ults. Both are meant as defensive ally buffs that grant bonus survivability. Lulu gives the ally a knockup and bonus HP, while Oracle does... um... Invincibility followed by death? Well, he just delays all healing and damage done for the spell's duration, but close enough. Oh, and it also applies a purge, so that's nice. Now that we've covered the abilities, let's take a look at the general enchanter's support gameplay. Just like in the last episode, the supports will often go to lane with their partner and remain there for a bit. But wait, where is Oracle going? Is he jungling? Well, yes, but actually no. By aggroing jungle creeps to the lane, he can have the lane creeps suicide to the jungle, denying experience and gold from the enemy lane. This is but a taste of what Dota supports can do. I have a large section of a previous video dedicated to the gameplay of supports in the early phases of the game for Dota. Please go and check that out after this video. Link and timestamp in the description box below. After the laning phase, Lulu will hover the ADC as they go to other lanes to farm, and occasionally will leave to join the team elsewhere. Oracle, and all Dota supports for that matter, will entirely abandon their carry in lane and join teamfights as often as they can. The carry, as mentioned before, can be pretty safe farming in the jungle. Enchanter supports in both games play very similarly in teamfights. They like to stay a healthy distance back, throwing spells out when needed, and trying not to die. Ah, not dying. That brings me to the item conversation. In League, most supports still scale with ability power, just like mages. For defense, a support can grab Zonia's Hourglass, which in Dota translates to Yule's Scepter of Divinity. Aside from that and the choice boots, supports will still go for items that directly buff their heals, shields, or nukes. In Dota, Enchanter supports know they are the strongest hero on the team and they're going to be priority number one to be murderized. Common support items include options to peel for allies and for yourself, with a plethora of defensive options to choose from. Squishy is only a state of mind, or a, a, a difference in gold. Lulu and Oracle can't look any more different, but their gameplay is surprisingly alike. If you're thinking about playing support in Dota though, please be warned that it is in fact the hardest role in the game to play well. Supports have an insane amount of responsibilities not covered here. Again, link to my other video with timestamp found below. Oh, and if you haven't seen it yet, I made a reddit post that covers everything you need to know as a league player to get started in Dota. In it, I cover common terms, settings, hero guides, and details on the, all the common roles of the game. Link also below. Thank you very much for watching to the end. Like and share if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. I am still a potato.